Cue the latest installment of Alistair's Accents. I'm going up in the world to explore the sounds of Glasgow and Edinburgh. So today is a great chance for me to find out why somebody like Five Lives, Nicky Campbell, call us now. Let us know what you think. Sounds so very different from uh, Andy Murray. I've got to go now. I've um, got to go and practice. I'm scratching my face. Thanks. And to get to the bottom of these accents, I'm going to start at the very top of Glasgow with science professor Jim Scobby. Folk from outside Scotland, they would think Glasgow sounds stronger. And you'll hear some vocalised L's, and you'll hear um, some H's for TH, like something and everything. OK, I'm just going to hear some real Glaswegian sound, instead of just me doing an impression of the comedian Kevin Bridges. Go on, big man. Attracted by a jobs boom during the Industrial Revolution, economic migrants from places such as Ireland and the Highlands have given the Glasgow accent some of the unique characteristics it has today. Whereabouts do you live? On a parkhead. Parkhead. So that's Celtic territory? Yes. Have we missed Rangers being in the top division? I'd say we miss the old fun, but I wouldn't miss Rangers, no. And do you play football yourself? I do. I play five. Sometimes I play at a crown point. A what? Crown point. So I'm hearing a lot of Mark's accent here, which is which is quite strong. Uh-huh. Uh, crown point, you said? Crown point. Crown point. Crown. Crown, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Favour side, that I becoming an AI sound. And you said you lived in Parkhead. Yes. But earlier on, your friend in the kitchen told me you lived in Parkhead. I will park it, park it. Park it when I'm talking to people like yourself. Yeah. You play in a restaurant, park it when I'm just talking to friends and whatnot. They understand what's in. Now, there's one thing there with Mark that he's doing, which is that upward intonation towards the end of things. That's going up like that. There's a typical Glasgow rising intonation like that, and it's shared with uh, Belfast. One person I hear a lot of that in is Colin Murray when he's doing Match of the Day 2, and absolutely everything seems to be a question. So you say that that's the influence people coming from Northern Ireland? Some people coming in from Ireland, other people going from Scotland to Ireland. These links that you get between people work in both directions. Are we going to hear that in Edinburgh? No, you're not going to hear that kind of thing in Edinburgh. It's a bet. Glasgow's great rival is only 45 minutes away, but Scotland's capital once languished behind its neighbour. Following the Act of Union with England in the early 18th century, many wealthy Edinburgh residents were being lured to London. Something had to be done to keep them and their money here. The city built a new town for them to live in and established itself as a centre of finance, law, education and publishing. It worked, but Edinburgh could never quite shake off the association it had established with the folks down south. The English. The posh, anglicised Edinburgh accent is something of a stereotype. But there's no doubt that a classic Edinburgh speaker does sound very different from a Glaswegian neighbour, especially when she's performing a piece of her own local poetry. When I was wee as wee can be, I craved invisibility. What a rare joke to find that cloak and go around quietly teasing folk. Now, to me, you sound like you've got a very typical Edinburgh accent. I'm hearing things, Jim, which are more like standard Scottish, perhaps, as we down south would, would think of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and very different from the accent we heard with Mark in Glasgow. Different um, vowels, the way you pronounce your R is very different. It's smoother and longer, more R. Tell us a little bit, if you will, about uh, the attitude between the two cities. I see the general attitude between the two is mutual disdain with knobs on, we hate each other. <laughs> it's, it's just a long going thing, I don't think it's very serious. The other thing we're noticing there is that she's not raising her voice at all, doing that upward inflection. No. Nope. Which we found in Glasgow, that was the Irish influence there. Mm -hmm. Obviously on this coast, there's a different influence. The type of intonation that you hear in the east is more neutral, and it doesn't have that distinctive twang that you get in the west. If you think about it, for a comedian, somebody like Kevin Rogers goes up a lot, and same with Bill when he was doing his stuff, you know. And maybe that's another reason, apart from the natural wit, why Glaswegians lend themselves well, so well for comedy. That there's an, an upward inflection which makes you interested and keeps you on the edge of your seat waiting for the punchline. Mm -hmm. There isn't one to this bit. These great rivals want to sound different to each other, but rivalries are often fueled by similarities. And despite their differences, these accents do share the same foundations of Scottish English. As Alan Hansen might say, like all great rivals, they've got a lot more in common than they'd like to admit. Hmm. Rising intonation. And I'm not from Glasgow or Edinburgh. Work that out. 